already ready. First round draft pick, baby. First round draft pick. All down. All come back. The 27th original million dollar drag race. For this one, we're back in Montgomery. This is gonna be a race vlog over my million and 100K races. Gonna go through it round by round, kind of like a story, slowly telling you guys about all the crazy stuff that happened. I think you guys are gonna like this one because there is a lot of right foot action, a lot of whomping going on in this video. You guys already saw the time run. I was 005, ran a 448 with a zero. Now, earlier on, I had an opportunity to make some moves down track and see how much it killed. Similar to my last video when I took a rip about when my back tires got to half track. This time I did that and I added another rip in there, killed about 35 thou. Going into the million, I had been holding around three to four and going into first round, I thought it would probably go a high 447, another low 448, and I decided to put a 451 on it. Thomas Wilson, 451, heads up race with Rocky McLean. goes left side wow eight total 007 did one that went a lot 27 dead three that went a lot too just not right here well we are headed to the re-entry round i was 27 he was seven dead one good lap by him i managed to find dead on i put it dead three saw him look over a couple times but i'm not sure he killed anything car looks like it was on another low 448 and looking at this i hadn't seen this before but this time slip looking a little suspicious and we have arrived at the Texas Roadhouse Saga. Looking back at it, I actually kind of thought the car would slow down a little bit on that last run, but it held with the low 448. Since it didn't slow down last run, I didn't think it would slow down this run since it wasn't much hotter. Philip Oakley, 439 in the left. Rocky McLean, 451 in the right. Just slap my shoulder like this. He's having fun and stuff. I gotta have surgery on it. 24 and 11 thou over, 16 and a thou under in the left for Oakley. Took 20, had to take 19 or less. I was 24, he was 16. Car was on like a mid 49, so killing what I thought I needed to put me one above. And fortunately, he was one thou under, taking 20. Roll up for the re entry round. Ton of people there, and of course, we get Texas Roadhouse. 10 degrees cooler and about 500 less feet of air. Thought it'd go a 446 this time. I put a 449 on it. He put a 430. 5 on it. So he dialed down 4 from last time. I dialed down 3. I knew he was holding a lot the round before, but I wasn't sure how much this time. Philip Oakley left hand side. 435. Taking on Rocky McLean right hand side. That little rock right side. It is. Dial 449. Six thou separate him up front. When light goes to Little Rock, nine total as Oakley. Double O three take fourteen thou to be eight thou under. I had to take six or less. Got it done right there. Followed it up with some steak dinner. I was nine dead zero. He was three and eight thou under, taking fourteen. Car ran faster than I thought it would. I had it on a four forty five. Something I want to share with you guys: why I think racing like this is really effective. Check it out as we're going down track here, and we get to the mile an hour cone. I'm still in front of him, but by the time we get to the finish line which is not much further all of a sudden it goes from me being ahead to now he's ahead 14 thou and if you think about it he's over there killing a bunch i didn't use any brake pedal to make that happen but essentially i'm slowing down to dead on and it made it where it was really difficult for him to find that window there was a window there a six thou window he could have got in on but like i said i'm slowing down he's moving pretty good 
and that gap shifted really fast and likely made it really difficult on him. Day two, going into round two with two entries. Wrote down that I thought I'd go at 450. Not too sure about that. It's been a few days, but my car is typically slower on the first run, and I dialed a 453. Cody McDaniel, 458 left side. Rocky McLean, 453 on the right side. For Rocky McLean, 18 green left side for Cody McDaniel. And 27th out under moving on to round number three. Uh, I don't know, guys. I got all of it. I was four red and ran a 448 with a nine and we were down to one entry headed up there for my second entry i rolled six in the box thought the car would slow down and go a 49 here put a 52 on it against the legend tom dauber Seven dead, two nine total in the end. Dauber was 20, take one, but goes 13 foul under, had no chance. Got the win. Car actually picked up, which was the opposite of what I thought it'd do. Picked up about a hundredth, right around a 448. Conditions say it should have slowed down, but maybe it had to do with it being the second run. It likes to go faster on the second run. I was seven to his 21, and I was liking how it looked going down through there. I took a pretty sizable third rip, trying to make it really close. I actually gave it back a thou, but I found dead on. I put it dead too, and he was 13 thou under. Third round, I drew Mike Crater. He always drives fast stuff. This time he was dialed 432, and basically off of what everybody else was doing i thought i would slow down to a 49 put a 52 on it my crater 432 left side rocky mclean 452 right side Win line McLean 12 and one above seven 29 total left crater five thou to play with after the launch he's 24 but it was above 11 thou to be six thou behind when light was on right there I was 12 to his 24 took two rips thought I was around dead on At that point I was still out on him a little bit and I tried to tighten it up even further from there I put it one above seven he put it one above one and I got there six thou had the car on a mid 49 thought I'd go another mid 49 rolling into round four and I kept the 52 dial Cody McDaniel in the left lane for 59 is the doctor. Rocky McLean in the right now 452 Seven thou advantage for McDaniel and McDaniel. It's it done. 13 dead three, taking one at the stripe. McLean's 20 up front, no chance. He breaks out three thou and doesn't get there. That was it for our million. I was 20 and three thou under. He was, he laid down a good lap. He was 13 dead three on the brakes. A couple things about that one. I told myself before going into it, if it looked like it did, I needed to take another rip just before the finish line and I didn't do it. I got a little bit too reactionary down there, seeing what he would do first, but I was locked out anyway. Watching his head, it looked like he decided pretty early that he was gonna drop and stop looking at me. So maybe not much I could do. I considered a 51 dial. It would have put me a little bit further back and maybe at that point he would have raced me with the gas pedal. I did check his slips and he sped up a little bit there. So maybe there was a chance he breaks out, but a good run by him and we were on to the 100K. This is where it starts to get a little crazy. Sunday 100K, not sure what happened to my first round run. So we're gonna hop in around two. Jansen Melton left side dial 439. Taking on Rocky McLean in the right dial 448. <laughs> Forty 
23 and 17 thou under. From this point forward, it's gonna be less about how I was racing and more about figuring out what was going on out there. Opponent went red there. When I got back, first thing I noticed was obviously the 43 reaction time. And I just knew there was no way I was 43 right there. It didn't feel very good, but I knew it wasn't that bad. Second thing I noticed was my 60 foot. I think the only reason I noticed it was because it was three digits instead of four. And I've never 60 footed faster than a second in my life. I remember talking to Nathan Martin. He said he had something similar happen. So at this point, I was starting to think a little bit like what could possibly be going on here. That first entry was at nine in the morning. My second entry was at one in the afternoon. It had gone from 58 degrees to 75 degrees and we were up a thousand feet of air. Just ran that 46 with an eight. I was confident it would go anywhere from a 48 to a 49. Champ left side, Stephen McCrory dial 458. Oh. They'll take on Little Rock, Rocky McLean, right side, dial 452. Champ in control, win like champ. 004 dead nine, 13 total. Low rock 22. Take 20 to be 19 thou under. Let go and I was like, oh, you just crushed it. Thought it could be red hoping for low double O. Took off and I was 22. Going down through there, killed about three hundredths to be three hundredths under. Got back to the trailer, looked at the slip and I was like, okay, absolutely not none of this makes any sense and this is when i went full detective mode after that round i opened the time slip app started watching a ton of rounds and i kid you guys not i saw like 50 runs in a row where the guy in the right lane was anywhere from 25 to 50 on the tree. Talked to a few groups of people. The opinions were mixed. Some people thought something was up. Other people didn't know. And it's just one of those weird deals. It's like, do you say something? Do you not say something? And eventually it was time for round three. Had to figure out the dial. I just was on a 46. <laughs> Car decides it wants to run the fastest pass it's ever made in its life, making like 300 more horsepower. Motor blows up. I go like a tenth faster than I thought I was going to break out like 800s, and that was it. <laughs> Light Little Rock 20 take a bunch to be 34 thou above. Just kidding, guys. Actually, blew the water pump gasket. He had some problems over there, and I put it three above. I want to give a huge thank you to Rick Huffman and the Graham family for helping us get it fixed so fast for round number four. Now, while we were getting it fixed, this run happened. Thirty-five thou separate them up front. When light goes to white, 004, dead 8, 12 total. Hastings 39 and 36 thou under. At this point, my car was fixed, and I was in the trailer trying to prepare for round four, considering everything that was happening. I stepped outside, and I noticed a big crowd of people all huddled around the starting line. Naturally, went down there to see what was going on. Nick Hastings had come up for his second entry, and I guess he refused to go down the track. He stopped behind the water box. Nick was saying he thought there was an issue with the right lane. We were all right up by the beams in the right, and you know how tracks have that black paint that's right around the stage beams? They decided to repaint that to try to prevent the sun's reflection from interfering with the beams. We were down there for quite a while, probably almost an hour. Everybody trying to figure out what to do. They did admit at one point that there was a problem. I mean, what would you do? Would you rerun the round? Would you split and quit? Would you let people back in? They decided to pick up where we left off, see if the repainting would help. Nick and his opponent got in the car and it was kind of crazy. It was almost like the million dollar final, how many people were standing behind him watching to see if there would be an issue. Everything appeared to be okay. I came up to the lanes for round number four. One, three, five, and seven had people in them. Not a single person was in two, four, six, or eight for the right. And I got the bad timing. Person in front of me got lane choice, so I was stuck with the right. Don Brown Jr. dial four, eight. Take on Rocky McLean, the second. The Rock, two, dial four, 50. Brown, one pound, red, McLean, 16. 
two of us. Opponent went red. I was 16. I remember I bumped up once because I was fearful that the lane had been fixed. So I would have been 12 and car ran slower than I thought. I was on like a high 48, low 49. One of the observations I made that round was most people were one to two slow. And I think that's because the lane was starting to give more accurate numbers. Rolled up for round five. There had actually been quite a bit of change weather-wise. It was a little cooler. Air was better. It's getting dark. Thought I'd go 47 here. Got stuck in the right lane again and I put a 50 on it. John LaBoos Jr. in the left lane. Four 61 is the dial. Rocky McLean right side, dial 450. McLean is 40 up front, dead six, still 11th out behind. John LaBoos Jr. advances. Let's take a look at the time slip. I was 40, and for the second time in my life, I 60-footed under a second. 0.999. No doubt in my mind that the track just had an issue again. I think it worked pretty good the time before and I had just 60 footed 1020 come back around for the 0.999. My dad hadn't come back to the trailer yet. He was down there. He knew what had happened. He was trying to argue our case. The sucky part about it was we know Nick Hastings lost one of his entries fourth round and I can confirm he came back two times in round five so they let him back in the race. I heard they let Jeff Sayer back in the race at some point. I don't know if there were any others but they decided not to let me back in which sucks i thought i had a good shot to win that round i was halfway through a hundred grander but it is what it is overall i feel like it was just an unfortunate situation caused by the track itself having issues then you got all these great promoters coming in trying to put on a good race and they're forced into these predicaments where they have to make really tough decisions i don't necessarily agree with letting some racers in and others not but i know they were under a ton of pressure and i bet they were trying their best to make the best calls no hard feelings and i know they were already on facebook asking people where they'd like to see the race held next year the og millions one of the coolest races out there put on by great people and i will definitely be back I think there's a really good final takeaway from all this. As a racer, there's a lot of people that, let's say, miss the tree and they're immediately hard on themselves. They're like, ah, I always miss the tree. I suck when maybe it's the car, maybe it's the trans brake, maybe it's the trans brake solenoid or whatever else. On the other hand, there's a lot of people that instantly blame the car. It's gotta be the car, can't be me. They change everything on it, make the car worse when it is in fact, maybe them, but it could also be neither could also just be the track. So in my opinion, as a bracket racer, you can't just jump to conclusions. Something ever doesn't seem quite right. You gotta trust your gut, but don't make changes too quickly. You gotta look at a lot of information. Don't be afraid to talk to people. Get a lot of different opinions before you make any of those changes. And I think going about it like that can really help you out a lot as a racer. That's gonna do it for this one, guys. Sorry it took a while to get this one out. I've been out of town for a few weeks. Had a lot of fun getting to go race with my dad. I actually got to see my dad race. I don't think that's happened since like 2018. I probably had just as much fun watching him as I had racing. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Gonna try to keep pumping them out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one.